This is Gentleman's History Off the Record. I'm Rob J. 10X, and I'm here with uh, criminal defense attorney uh, Daryl Austin. And uh, what we want to do with Off the Record is address uh, some current hot topic social issues and try to bring in an expert to uh, provide us some insight and counsel. And uh, what we'll be speaking today about is the, uh, I believe his name is pronounced, is it Derek Chauvin? I think so. Basically, we all know him as the officer that was on the neck of George Floyd. Okay, and that trial is, is beginning. And, you know, my faith is never that high when it comes to these type of trials. Uh, but just wanted to bring you in and discuss from a legal aspect, what are some of the challenges uh, that, you know, the the prosecution is going to be looking at and going in and and really just to kind of prepare people say is it realistic that we could potentially see that somebody walk away with a not guilty uh verdict so uh overall what are some of the challenges uh you think yeah so in terms of challenges we have to maybe address expectations and the public i think is setting up for an expectation for a conviction for a murder charge but if you look at the charges itself, the prosecutor has charged uh, Derek Chauvin in this case with um, third degree murder, second degree murder, third degree murder, and I believe it's second or third degree manslaughter. Mm. And the higher the number, the lower the severity, if that makes sense. So first degree murder would be the worst, second okay. degree is intermediary, third degree is like the lowest level, okay. you know, so on. So third degree, Murder is something that they recently uh, were approved of reinstating, meaning they had it charged by the grand jury. The judge dropped it, but now he's allowing them to go to the potentially go to the jury with this charge. Okay. And uh, second degree murder is basically the highest charge. And that carries with it a, a maximum sentence of, I believe, 40 years when I looked at it. Okay. The other two charges, the third degree is 25 years max, and then the manslaughter is a 10 year max in Minnesota. Okay. So when I talk about challenges, there's an expectation that, you know, he could get life in prison, and it's really not the case based on these charges. Wow. So just from the charges alone, the perspective of him getting life is going to be slim to none. It's not happening. The max is 40 years that he could get. Now, what potentially could happen is the judge runs everything let's say they get a conviction on all three charges he may potentially be able to run them consecutive like 40 years for the second degree 25 for the third degree and then 10 on the manslaughter and that's you know what 75 years right there that's an effective life sentence for okay. anybody now as a as a civilian non-lawyer you know uh what I to me, I see something that's plain and clear. You know, you sitting, standing on a, put your knee on a person's neck. They can't breathe. They repeatedly telling you they can't breathe. To me, it looks like what is there to prove? You know, right. So, one of the things we think of with murder is there an intent to to kill him. We know from the video that we've all seen the intent initially, if we're being objective and I'm saying if we're being objective, was to arrest him, to detain him. And during that action, the police's con the police officer's conduct exceeded perhaps what was necessary to arrest George Floyd or to detain him. And we look at what were the actions that we all feel by looking at that video, turn it from you know an accidental death to a homicide. Right, a homicide is like some kind of like intent to do something. Okay. Uh, manslaughter doesn't necessarily mean an intent to kill, but it's like you were intending to do an act that resulted in his death, unfortunately, either through negligence or carelessness. Okay. So how, um, I guess how important, one of the things you had uh, sent me in preparation for this talk was, you know, the cause of death and how important is the cause of death to whether or not uh, he'll be able to be charged with those murders uh, that you had discussed? Yeah, so his cause of death, I'll put it to you like this um, as an example. Let's take George Floyd out of it. Let's say it's like a, uh, uh, an accident where there's a drunk driver hits your car. 
and that drunk driver hits your car and you pass away. But if we found out that you didn't have your seatbelt on or you fell asleep at the wheel and you were out of control, would we think that drunk driver hitting your car was the result of you dying? We know the impact certainly caused your death, but maybe you had no control of your car. The drunk driver couldn't get out of your way, but he's driving drunk. And so look at it in that way, right? Okay. Was his drinking and driving the cause of your death? If you fell asleep, you didn't have your seatbelt on, and you were operating a vehicle without and, and not in control of it. You know, it's like a, it's a, it's a, I'm throwing out a hypothetical to kind of put it in perspective. Was Derek Chauvin's action of kneeling on George Floyd's neck the entire time the cause of his death? And when you look at the medical examiner's report, it was not the cause of death. It was a factor, a contributing factor. Wow. And so he's on trial right now, um, separate from the other three officers who were sitting on George Floyd's body, his back. And we know if somebody is sitting on your back, your lung um, breath, you know, your diaphragm is restricted. The medical report says that was a cause of death as well, the restriction. Mm. So can you rule it out completely? Their actions of sitting on his diaphragm were not, uh, was in no way the cause of death. But when you look at the, the autopsy report, it lists both. It's like a catch-all. They list both wow. as, as part of the cause of death. Wow. Man, that's a real, that's a real technical insight. I mean, because again, back to the naked eye, the cause of death, man said he can't breathe. What else, what else is there to it? Uh, let me ask you this too. Is the fact that he's being charged, but there were three, does his charge or does his, whatever he's, uh, the final verdict is on him, does that affect the other three in any way? Absolutely. And in fairness to the prosecution, they fought to keep everybody in trial together. They don't want the four defendants severed because now Chauvin can blame everything on those other three defendants, right? Mm. They're not going to be tried for a much later time. And let's assume there's a conviction on Derek Chauvin. They can now say, well, the jury said he's the cause of death. Mm. We're, we're not the cause of death, right? It just creates an unnecessary um, argument that could be considered beyond a reasonable doubt mm. or a reasonable doubt that they were not um, the but-for cause for a murder charge. They probably are all in a situation where they're contributing, but they can still walk by blaming each other or blaming the other party. Wow. Hey, well, it's uh, GHH off the record. Uh, obviously, we're, we are... You know, at least I speak personally. I'm hoping for a conviction to me. I feel like it's the morally right thing to do. But I think one of the things we try to do is empower people with objective information. And that's I really appreciate you bringing us that insight and that technical aspect. Uh, and also for you know uh, any contact, any legal issues, we're gonna be po we'll post uh, Daryl's uh, contact as well as a brilliant criminal defense lawyer. So, GHH off the record. Well, thank you for having me. If you're watching this on YouTube, man, hey, y'all, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. This is Gentleman's History Hour.